when this feast day comes up every year of Saints Peter and Paul that we celebrate today, it makes us think of the papacy and of eternal Rome and the, the source of our Catholic faith. And while we're thinking about St. Peter and Rome, the capital of the church, it makes us think about the language of Rome, the Latin language, which is the language that the church uses in the liturgy, because that's the language of Rome, or it used to be. Now, the Latin language is something that's very important to us as, as Catholics. When all the changes were made in the 60s at Vatican II, one of the first things they did was to change the language of the Mass from Latin into the local language of the people, which is called the vernacular. And this is one of the first things that people objected to, even if they didn't understand a lot of the other changes that were made. They knew right away that something was wrong if the Mass wasn't being said in Latin anymore. And the use of the Latin language became sort of a rallying point for people who wanted to resist the changes. They knew that they had to attend a Mass that was said in Latin. There's a lot more to the changes than that, though, and unfortunately for a lot of people, that's, that's as far as they went. They didn't investigate further into what else was changed, but they were absolutely correct about, about Latin and the liturgy. There are a lot of reasons why the church has used Latin over the centuries, and I thought today would be a good time to talk about that. Well, we have to understand, first of all, that every detail of the Mass and the sacraments and the liturgy is chosen with great care by the church. There's nothing that happens just haphazardly or at random by the church. There are very important reasons for everything the church does, so Latin is no exception. Certainly the Mass would be valid if it was said in other languages. The words of consecration are valid no matter what language they're said in. But God in his providence chose Latin to be the language of the Mass. Now, even though Latin is the language that is used in the Mass in the vast majority of the church, it would be a mistake to think that there are no Catholics anywhere that use a different language. And even in, in, in traditional times, I'm talking about, in a few parts of the world, mostly in, in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, places like that, the church allows other languages in, in certain cases, like Ethiopian, Arabic, Greek, and a few others. But of course, the vast majority of the church says Mass in Latin in the Western Rite. We don't know what language the apostles themselves used in their celebration of Mass. We have no record about that. But we do know that for the first four centuries of the Church, the Mass was only celebrated in one of the three sacred languages. So, what are the sacred languages? They are Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. And they're called the sacred languages because those are the three languages that were written on our Lord's cross. The inscription that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, was written three times, once in each of those languages. Over time, the church has reluctantly allowed a few other languages to be used by Catholics in the liturgy. But this has usually happened when some group of heretics or schismatics would want to come back to the church, but they were already saying Mass in their own language, which is something that, that heretics like to do, as we'll see. And they were extremely attached to their liturgy. And the church decided that it would be better to let those people back into the church and tolerate their Mass in, in some other language. So that's, that's how this happened. And even among those languages that, that the church has allowed to be used, None of them have been spoken for many, many centuries now. So in reality, the, church, the Catholics that attended those ceremonies, they hear a language that is as unfamiliar to them as Latin is to us. Now, the practice of offering the liturgy in a language that is not spoken or understood by most people is a very ancient one, and there are reasons for it 
that are very important that we'll get into in a second. But since the 12th century, it's something that people have been objecting to more and more, the use of, of Latin or, or any ancient language in Mass. But the people who have objected to saying Mass in Latin have not been good Catholics or saints or theologians. They've always been either heretics or, or liberal Catholics or rationalists and so on. And the reason that they objected to saying, using Mass in Latin and they wanted to use the, the regular spoken language was in order to loosen people's connection to the Catholic Church. They had an excessive spirit of national pride and they thought that their attachment to their country and, and their own language and their own culture was more important than their attachment to the Catholic Church. So that was why they said that the Mass should not be said in the language of the Catholic Church, but in the language of their own country. The Church has condemned this idea several times. It not only forbade people to use the vernacular in Mass, but it even condemned the idea several times. The Council of Trent was absolutely clear and definitive about this. It says very simply, if anyone says that the Mass should be celebrated only in the vernacular, let him be anathema. In other words, it's a heresy to say that Mass should be said in the language of the people. So there you go. That's all we need to know. In the beginning of the Church, the Mass at Rome and in the Roman Empire was said in Latin because that's the language that was used. But when the Roman Empire expanded into other areas, into what is now France and Spain and, and Germany and other places where the people didn't speak Latin, the Church brought the Mass to those people still in Latin. And that's how it's been ever since, and that's how it's supposed to be. Most people don't know this, but the practice of offering divine worship in an ancient and a sacred language is not just something that we do in the New Testament. Even in the Old Testament, at the time of our Lord, the liturgy in the temple and in the synagogues was offered in ancient Hebrew, the sacred language of the ancient patriarchs. But the common people did not understand ancient Hebrew. They spoke a language called Aramaic. Even our Lord himself, that was the language that, that, that he spoke. Everybody did. And that means that our Lord and the apostles attended the divine worship in a language that was as unfamiliar to them as Latin is to us. And of course, our Lord never condemned this practice. And he, he sanctioned it by his participation. So what is the reason why the church wants to use Latin? First of all, it's not because the church doesn't want people to understand what's being said in Mass, as, as the heretics say. The church wants people to understand the Mass, and in the, the same Council of Trent, the church commanded the clergy to preach to the people about the prayers of the Mass and about the doctrines about the Mass, and to talk about the epistles and the Gospels that are read on Sunday, and, and priests do, still do that today. But the, the, the use of Latin in Mass prevents so many problems from, from cropping up, and it contributes so much to the good of the liturgy and to the worship of God, that all of these good things counteract the relatively slight problem of people not being able to understand what the priest is saying. So why is Latin used? First of all, as I said, that language is consecrated and it's made holy by the inscription that's attached to our Lord's cross. And now, 2,000 years later, it's immemorial tradition to say Mass in Latin. And if this language was used on our Lord's cross to announce to the world the great message of our redemption then certainly it's good enough to use in the worship of God. So as I said, only the three sacred languages on the cross were used for the first four centuries of the church. But out of those three languages, Latin became the predominant one. First of all, because of the Roman Empire, 
it was the civilization at the time. And also because St. Peter came to Rome, and he made that the head of the church. So obviously, the language of Rome would become the language of the church. And the missionaries came out from Rome to spread the church, and they brought with them the Latin language. <clears throat> and it is true that for a while, in the very beginning of the church, there were still a lot of people that, that understood and spoke Latin. But over the years, it, it fell out of use. But even as it fell out of common usage, it remained the language of the Catholic Church. People say that it's a dead language now because it's not used and it's not spoken, of course. But in reality, it's not dead. Rather, the Latin language is immortal. It will live and it will be spoken in the sanctuary and in the church until the end of time. From the very beginning of the church, this language was used to offer sacrifice to God and to praise Him and to distribute the means of grace in the sacraments and to sanctify the faithful and to lead them to heaven. And it's certainly a beautiful thought to think about the fact that we offer sacrifice and pray to God at Mass, not just in the same language, but in the same exact words that were once whispered in the tunnels of the catacombs, where the primitive Christians were hiding from persecution. We say the same words that filled the great basilicas when the persecutions were over, and that echoed off of the, the vast Gothic arches of the medieval cathedrals. We say the exact same words that countless saints and bishops and priests have said in offering sacrifice and praying and singing the praises of God. In this language, we have the most beautiful liturgical formulas. We have the ancient hymns and prayers and readings of the Mass. <clears throat> and this creates a link between us and our predecessors in the faith. How can we take something like that and just throw it away like they did at Vatican II when they they brought down upon themselves the anathema of the Council of Trent. Latin is also very well suited for the divine liturgy because it's unchangeable and mysterious at the same time. It's not used anymore in common speech. The language has a sound that is dignified and grave, but it's clear and it's precise at the same time. A lot of times it's hard to translate something precisely from Latin to English, because it has a subtlety that doesn't exist in English. The fact that Latin is unchangeable is also extremely important, because language is something that, that changes all the time. Words are always changing their meanings. And if the church allowed every part of the world to say Mass in their own local language, the meaning and the sense of the prayers would change over time as the language changed. And it would be nearly impossible for the church to guarantee that they were expressing themselves correctly or keeping the ideas the same in their liturgy. The church would have to constantly supervise every single part of the world to make sure that their prayers were up to date. And it would have to issue updated, updated uh, missiles to every country on, on a regular basis. It would be hard enough to do that even today with all the technology we have and, and uh, you know, worldwide communication. But in the fifth century, it would be completely impossible. But on the other hand, if the church has one language that is used everywhere, that doesn't change over time because... People don't speak it commonly, and it eliminates this entire problem. In fact, even today, a priest can get a missile that's 500 years old and open it up and say Mass just as easily as he could a missile that was made in modern times. Now, since Latin is something that we don't use in our daily lives, and we only hear it at church, it has a holy and a mystical aspect to it when we hear it. And that's another reason why it's so suitable for Mass. 
It sounds beautiful and mysterious and ancient. And it puts us into the mood and the frame of mind that we should be in when we adore God. After all, God himself is beautiful and mysterious and ancient. So we should use a language in worshiping him that's all of those things too. Latin is something special. It's only used for one purpose anymore, really, which is just to glorify God. So it's become, in a sense, consecrated. It belongs to God. This also prevents it from being used for any profane purpose. And it also makes sense that in a mysterious ceremony, we use a mysterious language. It, it throws a veil over the mysteries that we're celebrating. But the use of Latin in Mass doesn't prevent the faithful from benefiting from the Holy Sacrifice, even though that's always been the pretext that the heretics used to get rid of it. When these heretics say that the Mass should be celebrated in the language of the people so that they'll understand it and so that they'll learn from what is being said, that's based on a completely <coughs> erroneous notion of what the Mass really is. The Mass is not a catechism lesson per se. The Mass is a liturgical function performed by a priest to glorify God and to atone for people's sins and to lead them to heaven. And it's very good if people learn about God while they're at Mass, and they should, but that's not its primary purpose. Now, of course, people should participate in the Mass by following along and uniting their hearts to what has taken place on the altar. That's why they're there. But it's not necessary to understand every single word that's being said in order to do that. And, and what people really need in order to benefit as much as possible from the Mass is not so much a detailed understanding of every word, but rather it's a, a strong faith and a love of God, a contrition for their sins, and a desire for God's mercy and His grace. And someone can have all of those things without understanding what's being said. The use of a single language also contributes to the unity of the church, not only through space, but also through time. The church is one. It has one faith, one liturgy, and one law. And it really helps people to grasp that when they assist at Mass in a language that is used everywhere. And so when someone travels halfway around the world to a place where everything else is different, and they go into a Catholic church and they hear the same language at Mass that they hear at home, it really impresses on them the unity of our faith. So let us think about all these things when we go to Mass. And when people ask us why we go to Mass in Latin, in a language that we don't understand, we should tell them that it's because Latin is a holy language. It unites the church. It preserves the sense of the prayers and the doctrines that the prayers contain. And it links all of us into one, one body, one institution, which is the mystical body of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs>